is going to throw some questions at me and I'm going to try and give my views. But I'm going to leave it open if anyone has alternative views or wants to give a point or make a point there, especially you. you. Please come across, take the mic and please say. Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, we're going to try and uh, do these uh, very quick but rapid fire questions. The intent is to have a bit more interaction with uh, all of you. So uh, it isn't really just Bowman uh, that I need to ask. Uh, you are very, very free, but we by you particularly. Very free to be able to give your comments on the questions that I ask. So, some that I would ask this uh, young, handsome man, I would be a little personal. Wait, wait, one second. Come on. Yeah, keep people quiet behind them. That was always a bargaining to keep people here. So, uh, my, my first question is that uh, you know, we've seen a very strong recovery uh, that has happened uh, over the last uh, 18, 24 months. I mean, honestly, I not expected uh, the way that this recovery took place. You know, when in March 2020 the lockdown happened, you know, that one quarter was really, really dangerous and one wasn't very sure that how this is going to pan out. And look at it, uh, the recovery that happened and not only that, the turnout. You know, the stalls that you go inside and you have a look at it, the energy, the positivity, the enthusiasm, and you're hopefully over the next three days, the customers that are going to walk in. So my first question to you is that what are the factors that have led to such a dramatic recovery? Sanuj, uh, my view is quite simple, right? The harder you go down, the faster you bounce back up. And I still remember when the entire pandemic had started and when our Prime Minister had come and said the whole country is going to shut down, none of us knew what the hell is happening, right? We were all concerned, worried. Rather, I was teaching human do. I was saying all business are finished. Uh, but we realized, and I, I remember a lot of conversations with you at that point of time, when Bangalore and the market started recovering, and you gave us statistics and numbers as to how people, that's when we started thinking about the human psychology part of it. People were so cooped up in their homes that they realized the true value of a good home. And that led to people, you know, putting their money other than stock shares, bonds, gold, which every Indian loves to do. He went back to the old world wisdom of, you know, 50% of my wealth should be in real estate, because that is the only real wealth I can enjoy. I think uh, that then coupled with everything the government did, you know, reduced interest rates, uh, Arashtra government did fantastically in terms of dropping the, the stamp duty. The very fact that during the entire pandemic, salaries continued, people continued supporting their people, and there were no outlets, no expenses being done by people. I think all of this led to a surge, a big wave, a huge boom, actually, at that point of time, and somehow that has been sustained to them too. Pranjee, what I would want to ask you is uh, that, you know, other than this uh, demand which Aman is saying is that there was a lot of pent-up demand built up, a uh, lot of uh, the roti kapra or makan, you know, somewhere in makan we had forgotten and it has come back uh, again. Is there anything else that you think uh, has been the reason for this very strong recovery? So, always uh, saying in the past, real estate is the first choice when the investment comes. In the okay. Indian mentality, people will first thing for the home, then everything. So first the home, and after the as Bowman has told, after the pandemic, people have really realized the value of the home, and that's the reason why the this and the pending demand of there is already there is a gap between supply and demand, and because of the pandemic uh, backlog demand, so this is the, what we are seeing to the backlog. In. Yeah, I, and I agree with that and I'll just add a uh, couple of more reasons to this is, uh, you know, clearly the liquidity uh, help. And the best thing is, you know, the developers did not unnecessarily increase the prices. You know, the prices maybe by were only increased as per the input cost uh, increase. So clearly that has been a great thing from an affordability uh, perspective. Then very all. Yeah, I know. Also, the real estate industry after ERA has become a highly organized industry. Very good point. And Very good point. the trust of the customer is at a completely different level. Another thing is that the pump priming by the Indian government, the FM, has led to a huge liquidity yes. in, the in the pockets of the correct people. And I think third thing is, as you rightly said, every developer has decided he will make only this much profit. But see to it that he says, and there is a lot of liquidity. So, no, my next, my next question I would ask uh, Deepak Bhai and Mahathraji, but before that, Bhavan, you know, Bhavan, Bombay has, Acha, sorry, please, okay, sorry, sorry, to add to this demand after the COVID, COVID
Ayodhya has really helped the real estate for two reasons. Everybody wants to update their housing because of the COVID. They have a balcony, they want to study to work from home. And the most important factor is that the second home has come to the market. A totally new product which people were not aware of. I think that's going to be a major factor for years to come in the real estate. Absolutely. My second question is, uh, coming to you, is that Bombay has done exceptionally well. I mean, uh, there is uh, maybe 235,000 crores of uh, inventory that was sold in the first nine months of this year, and 50% of that across India was Bombay. Can you imagine? 50% of the sales in India is now Bombay. But oh, I you, I you, know. So, so, uh, coming to you first, and then I want to bring in uh, Deepak Bhai and Mr. Manoj as well, is that what's the reason that Bombay is doing exceptionally well? So, uh, historically, right, we've been the city of gold. Right? We've been the city of dreams. Uh, we've been the city where people have come from far and wide and, and made a living for themselves. Uh, I guess in a way I'd like to say, uh, not, not really, uh, in any way, but this city is kind of blessed. We have one of the best shorelines that we have. We have some of the best, uh, what do you call, green spaces. Add to that, we've got a potluck of culture out there. Right? Right. We've got people from around the country and some yes. international uh, citizens also. And we've got a great mix. So what Bangalore did in the last 10 to 15 years, Mumbai has had for the last 50 years. Right? So the culture is unbeatable and we've all had the advantage of that. Given the fact that government of Maharashtra also suddenly decided to give a lot of boost to the housing industry has really helped us. Right? Uh, you should tell me why 50% and I use this line pretty often that the recognized residential real estate of the country 50% of it took place in MMR only. I mean, that is remarkable. That is something we can all be thankful for. But I have no other reasons to say except the fact that there was a huge population out here. The millennials wanted to start buying. Everyone who was on rent and rent alone or wanted the rent culture suddenly decided that it's more important to have a home. I guess uh, the penny had to drop somewhere and this was exactly the time it did. Absolutely. What, what's the secret? I mean, you know, hopefully this continues the way it has. I will definitely continue and to add further to what Baban has said, uh, definitely the way government of Maharashtra is doing infrastructure in the city of Mumbai. That's a very important point. So this is really led to people spreading across, buying the large houses at the distant suburb, MMR area. That has also led to people buying in a big way. And overall, if, if you see the opportunity, the price wise, what we were, since almost 7-8 years, our prices are stagnant. So inflationary, if you see, we are the most affordable price in today's market with the best of the home loan here. So from the customer's point of view, the Bombay real estate is definitely very attractive. Radhi Bhai has said that our Indian mindset is the first investment what we want is buying a home. And Bombay point of view, definitely, it is an opportunity where prices are best in home loan and the infrastructure and the city culture that has really multiplied the demand in the city of Mumbai. Perfect, I think what's the reason for Bombay to do so well? I think Bombay is the safest city in the India. Yes. Is, is the? Safest city in the India. Yeah, no, I'm trying to Yes. That's the reason. The strong Bombay reason is the culture of Bombay. Culture of Bombay. The work culture of Bombay. Is Which I think, absolutely. Yes. You may go anywhere now. You may go and say, you go anywhere. No, you, you, you will definitely be the far apart culture and if a person and a executive in the CNA activity wants to make a career, that is the... They will come to Bombay. Yes, very good point. Yes. That's the health plan. Today, you know, according to me, the price are not too affordable. But today, the new development and with the new premium and new construction cost, the cost will be far, far greater. Yes. Everyone, I mean, today, people are selling building under construction will be already at least spent. Correct. Correct. But the new spend will be 25 million higher than the old spend. Power now. Hello, wait, wait. Yes, yes, please, please. So, uh, one more thing which uh, I think Mumbai MMR has been able to give is that the Mumbai MMR is not an expensive city. Mumbai MMR is not an expensive city which has been proved because we have the outskirts, the next, uh, the Panvel, or maybe, you know, Kalyan Nongi Valley, or Vasai Mira, have been able to give 
flats, the very good quality flats, between 40 to 60 lakhs. I think now very that, important point. That's a very, very important thing because the developers really understood what exactly the buyer wanted. Yeah. And that's what they kept on supplying. And that's the reason I think uh, it's really pricing, sizing, everything match the buyer's perspective. So we, we, we have Mr. Shravan Hadigar ji here. Gentlemen, sir, please, welcome. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, we've got all the developers here. I want to ask you a question. All the mistakes that are made, and if you go back in history, you will see they were made in good times. We're in good times. What do you think are the mistakes that we should avoid making in these good times? What developers should avoid making? What developers, what developers should avoid, given that we are in good times? What should we be careful? of not going because when you go into history you will see all mistakes were made in good times. So thank you for asking a very philosophical question. <laughs> At the time when you are here to celebrate the Gala Expo, which is going to celebrate the expansion of the entire developers uh, industry. But I would like to just suggest two factors to this question. Is one is a question of sustainability. As a developer, you are looking at your own product, but large-scale sustainability has to be paid attention to. And I just don't mean by environmental sustainability or financial sustainability, but one must remember that eventually in COVID times, we realized that people need to be connected with one another. And they need that connectivity by talking about exclusive spaces we are trying to disconnect people. So when we are trying to enclose a balcony, we are trying to enclose some more space for creating more room in a house. We are doing it at the cost of a public open space where we are going to bring a lot of people together. I think for future this sustainability of interaction is going to be more important. Sustainability of the nature. So the choice of materials that we are going to make the choice of construction technologies that we are going to do is going to be of essential importance. Very true. Aman, I am going to ask you a pritam. No, he is, is, you have to, you have to ask him. He is like Aman, he is like Aman. He is like the NV like the, the, the saying of, uh, you know, Indian real estate. How do you think, pritam? What's the name of the NV saying? Can I get him? Can I get him? SRK, SRK. So my, my question to Baman is that if we had an opportunity tonight to have dinner with four people of his choice, who would be those four guys? Guys, that's the problem. Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's, he's boxing me in a corner of us. <laughs> no, but actually see, uh, I think uh, one of the things that worked well for me was, uh, you know, I invited a Bollywood star home for dinner once and I got married to her. <laughs> I don't think I'll do another. <laughs> So that's it. No, but if I were to have dinner, I think uh, one of the people would be uh, only alive or even those that are no more. I can, no, no more as well. So, you know, Steve Jobs would be definitely one of those I'd call home because there is so much of design, simplicity, efficiency that one could kind of pick up from him. Very nice. Another madman I'd like to have is Elon Musk <laughs> because that man would drive us crazy with all his ideas and he'd be smoking up and giving us some stories. And, and today launched a perfume as well. Correct. He, he could do anything from shoot his mouth off on Twitter to launch a this into Mars. Um, who else? And, 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 and genuinely, if it is possible, I would like to call our Honorable Prime Minister home just to understand where he gets his energy from, the drive, the desire to continually make nice, changes nice, 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 and nice, do the things nice, that he's doing. Nice, yeah. Nice. See, I, I dream big, huh? One, one person who has had a tremendous impact on you as a leader? I, I would say Ratan Tata. Uh, I would actually say the entire Tata uh, nice, nice, nice. You know, if you if you look at their philosophy in life, it is so much to do with doing good for people all around you. Because no one can stand in isolation, no one can become great or whatever by themselves. You know, that's why people moved from India to the US because the opportunities were plenty, because everybody around was living a certain prosperity. I think the Tatas would definitely be there. Um, everything that I tried to do, you know, including recently when we started working with an ESG consultant, and she asked me, what is our goal? 
I said, you know, I want to be like the Tatas as far as compliance is concerned. Can we just get there? All Parsis are similar minded. I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. One decision in life you wish you had not made. Look, it's simple. If you put it in the ground, you put it in the ground. You don't remember it. If you put it in the ground, you put it in the ground. If you put it in the ground, you put it in the ground. Move on. The only people who have succeeded according to me in life are those who could brush off their problems, brush off their mistakes, forget about it and keep moving on. That's it. But you still have to ask Pritam a question. Pritam say, Pritam, one, one, one. You made tough questions to ask. What motivates you to get out of bed every morning? The sheer passion actually. There's no doubt about that. Sheer passion of going to work and building, doing what we do every day. It's a very, uh, you know, noble job. So, we share passion on that. Could I, could I agree? He's saying they actually need to go to the loop. <laughs> <laughs> if not in real estate, which other business would you be in? Actually, if you know my past, I chose real estate. So, it's difficult to think anything apart from real estate for me. But uh, obviously, I, would, I was on the other side, that is the fund side. So I would like to be on the private equity side. On the private equity side. Man, look at it. I would invite him to do a stand-up comic sometime. I'm telling you, you'll have the best evening of your life. <laughs> if you don't agree with me, I'll just call Dominic out here and Dominic will tell you how good he is. <laughs> there, there he is, Dominic. Dominic, you agree? Totally. He can keep you split for like one hour non-stop. He'll <laughs> be sold out to your entire school. Nice. Come in to you. If you were in the hot seat for a day, and were given to be given the power to take decisions for the Indian real estate sector. What will be the top three things on your mind? So oh, I, I, I'm going to actually speak about that when the CM comes to. You know, I have this theory. Guys, listen to me. This is very important. I have this theory. If uh, a rocket that goes to the moon can be launched on only software, right? If your entire Indian passports which is considered to be the most sensitive document you have, can be run by TCS. I have a question, why can't we actually get our DCR entirely to run on a software that will kind of, 80% of the approvals will take place as quickly as possible. Most of us are compliant, so you know, that would take care of things. The 5, 10, 15% who would have to go, would have to go to an officer for you know, getting the deviations done. Your collections would take place on time because by the time the payment is due, the developer would know that his payment is due and he'd have to make it. Otherwise, the software would be non forgiving, right? This would allow good developers to continually grow in number. And those who just came into this business for the money, which is actually the wrong reason to come into this business, would actually get wheeled out. I think that'd be the one change I would make. I'd encourage, and India is so good a software power, that I would encourage that our government strongly think about this. And the ultimate EODB, uh, ease of doing business, would take place when we actually move from this person-to-person -person interaction and actually move into this uh, space of the software taking care of our I mean, design idea. Idea. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, we, we, we already started off on, on that uh, route when we started off with EODB, but there's a lot more that we need to do right now. My, my last question to you, Bhavan, I know that we are holding up uh, everyone. My last question, you know the passion that you have and the core values with which uh, you and Percy have uh, set up Rustam Ji, how do you percolate it down within your organization? So, uh, Anuj, I'll say this, right? Uh, you find purpose and the means follow. You decide you want to do something, the whole world who wants to do the same thing aligns with you. I am blessed with probably the best team in the world. Forget only in my office or in my business, even in this organization over here, you have to take it from me that uh, there are these young boys, where's Nikunj? Nikunj! Where are you? Come here. Tejas, where are you? Joseph? Kevan? You know, I, I, we just decided we had to do this event. We got this ground only on the 6th after the CM's rally out here. On the 7th, not even on the 6th. Joseph. Right? And this team, led by him, where's Dhawal? Dhawal. All the inspiration came from Dhawal. Absolutely. And these that guys just rocked it. Right? Brilliant guy. I Big round of applause to this team. I was unwell through the last 3-4 days. I have not even come to the site till as late as yesterday. And the job these guys have done, 
Phenomenal guys, a big round, big round of applause for these guys. They are well done, well done, well done guys. So you see, it's easy. <laughs> That's right. No, I agree with that. Uh, you know, if you are blessed with a great team, you know, you can deliver outstanding results and we are seeing today the way that these results have been delivered. Thank you, Dalak Kabal, uh, for championing it. You've been always very kind with your time. And Does all... anyone have a question for Anuj? Does anyone have a question for Anuj? No, we are now finished. Thank no, no, wait. <laughs> Nobody has a question for Anuj? No, not at all. Anuj, who was the one who walked away and you would have actually loved her instead? <laughs> Let me let me too dangerous. Thank you. Thank you very much guys. Thank you. Thank you.